making solo YouTube videos. It's a lot of work on foot, back and forth, driving through, backing up, setting up cameras, running back to the van, driving through, running back to the camera. But when you're out here doing stuff like this, in this kind of territory, it's pretty hard to freaking beat, that's for sure. definitely get your workout out here in Colorado filming YouTube videos because at this elevation it doesn't take much to get out of breath that's for sure Whew, that's all right though it's good for the body it's good for the body getting that workout in you know What's up guys, it's Chad with Living the Van Life. And right now, I am out here in the Buena Vista region of Central Colorado. This morning I woke up bright and early to head out here to what is one of the jumping off points for the Colorado Backcountry Discovery Route, also known as the Colorado BDR. I figured I would head north out of here and see what this terrain has to offer. The region around here in Buena Vista is perhaps some of the most unique, stunning, and most beautiful terrain that I have seen here in my travels of the western United States. I figured I'd walk you guys through some of the steps of what I take to make the van more comfortable for some miles of off-road travel as we make our way north through some rough and rugged Colorado terrain. There are some simple things that you can do to your Sprinter van or any overland vehicle for that matter that will help the ride off-road. So here in a Sprinter van with it being 70 PSI in the rear and 50 in the front, anytime we get off-road with that kind of air pressure, we're gonna feel every pebble, every rock, every pothole, etc. So one of the simplest, most effective way to improve your ride when it comes to off-roading is letting some air out of your tires. Not only is it going to improve your ride, but you're also going Going to gain traction in snow in sand and when it comes to crawling up steep terrain or tough terrain so that's a couple reasons why we want to air down but for me mostly it's to improve the ride because I have a big giant sprinter van on rough roads at highway pressures I get a lot of rattling and it's not very comfortable so with that being said let's jump into the process of airing down this right here is my speed flate device. This is a device that hooks up to all four tires at once and it allows me to air down all four tires at the same time. And also when it comes time to airing up at the end of the trail, this device will air up all four tires at once. So for tires here on the van, I run the BF Goodrich KO2 all-terrain tires. Uh, these right here are a 285, 75, 17. For airing down these tires, I like to go 17 to 20 pounds on the front and anywhere from 27 to 30 pounds on the rear. Once you've removed your valve stem caps, don't forget to put them in a safe spot. I like to put mine right in the back pocket of my pants. Now, for those of us with late model vehicles, oftentimes you can monitor the tire pressure on your dash. And that is certainly the case here in my 2020 Mercedes Sprinter van. And up on the dash, it will give me the tire pressure at all four corners. I find this to be a much more accurate way of getting the specific pressure that I like. For those of you that don't have that option on your vehicle, 
Using the gauge on the speed flate will get you in the ballpark. Now that I've got the rear tires aired down to the desired pressure that I wish to have out here off-road, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the speed flate from the rear tires and I'm gonna go ahead and continue airing down the front to about 20 PSI. Now once the air down process is complete, don't forget to put your valve stem cap back on. I like to put those back on just to keep the dirt, snow, mud, ice out of the valve stem, keeping those properly operational. Now one last thing we're gonna talk about before we get this adventure back on the road, or off the road rather, I guess, is we're gonna talk about a sway bar disconnect. Now sway bars are placed on vehicles for improving its highway handling. Here on the Sprinter vans, the front sway bar is extremely heavy duty. However, when we get out here into the off-road and we start going through undulating terrain and different potholes, etc., and with such a tall vehicle, these vans can really get to swaying back and forth and quite violently almost to where it wants to throw your head through the driver's side window. One of the things that Van Compass has come up with as an idea to be able to help improve that is actually a sway bar disconnect, which is down inside here. And that allows the front suspension to be able to travel looser and more efficiently when you're traveling off road. Now this here is the front sway bar. You can pull this pin, you can pull the lower pin, and now we can just pop this out of the equation and now the front suspension can operate independent of each other. You get several more inches of flex out of the front end and you get a much smoother ride because this sway bar isn't trying to stabilize the van. So as you guys will see here in this next clip, you can see the front suspension drop into the hole quite significantly more than it normally would with the sway bar actually hooked up. And that there is one of the benefits of having a disconnected sway bar. You're able to keep more tires on the ground more often. With that being said, let's be done with the technical talk. Let's get back to the adventure and let's go see what this amazing terrain here in Colorado has to offer. And what I'm noticing is it looks like a little bit of thunderstorms starting to build around the area. So that could make today very interesting. Let's get back on the road. Let's go see what we can find.
Well, it is monsoon season here in Colorado. Yet another afternoon where it's deciding to pour down some rain. It's much welcomed because the scenery around here is so green because of it. Some kind of big booming thunder clouds around. Part of what I love about the southwest in this area is the fact that when it rains, it pours. Well, that is the difference between an actual dirt road and a gravel road in the rain. That dirt was snotty and slick, that's for sure. Now we're back on gravel, making some good time through this section of the Colorado BDR. I've just made my way kind of down out of the hills and out into a completely different part of Colorado. And I continue to be amazed and blown away by how the terrain, how the landscape changes throughout this route. Because now we've opened up into this amazing vista overlooking some plains and a lake and some rolling hills. But look at this out here. This is just incredible. Well, that is the end of this particular section of the Colorado BDR, where we headed east out of Buena Vista. I am completely surrounded by thunderstorms that are rolling through the area, which is so very cool. I can hear the thunder rolling throughout. So this is kind of the classic Americana highway as it heads out through the countryside all so very quietly and lonely out here in the middle of nowhere, Colorado.
Well, with the way the rain is socked in here this evening, you'd think we're back in Washington on a cold, chilly fall day. That's what it feels like here in Colorado. But I gotta be honest with you, I'm definitely thankful that these guys are getting the rain because the alternative is an extreme drought and extreme fire danger. Colorado has treated me very, very well. It's been exceptionally beautiful in green and that is because of this rain. So I'm willing to put up with it. Luckily, I've got the shelter of the van, I've got the shelter of the awning. Every time the weather is inclement, I'm always very, very thankful for those items. This is a three quart instant pot. It's great because it fits nicely just right up here on my pull out trays when I'm not using it. And I've actually used the heck out of this thing when I'm urban stealth camping and not out cooking over campfires. It's a great way to cook simple and healthy meals, which I've been really trying hard to do lately. But I'm gonna do a bit of a avocado toast, which I wanted to do some poached eggs, which is super simple to do here in the instant pot. Normally you can get the egg poachers, the little silicone cups for eggs. However, I was out here at one of the country stores and just found some silicone muffin cups and turns out it works really well for doing poached eggs. I'm gonna take two of these eggs set in there on top of the trivet so they're up off the bottom. I've got a cup of water in there. Pressure cook these for three minutes. So when I'm not cooking over a campfire, this is a great alternative for cooking a simple healthy meal. It's nice having it available right here in the back of the van and we're gonna have some poached eggs for the avocado toast here this evening. After a long day of traveling on the trail, there's nothing like a simple meal at the end of the day. Simple, clean, and healthy. Definitely different than the usual live in the van life meal that we cook with this evening's rainstorm that rolled through. We were lucky enough to even be able to be outside here. It was coming down pretty good and there was rivers coming in from underneath the van all over the place. When the weather moved in, we had to call an audible, go with the fire can, and an even simpler meal. Well, I've got the BFG KO2 tires aired back up to highway pressure. 50 in the front, 70 in the rear. 
That's where the Sprinter van likes to be at for highway travel. I've got the sway bar disconnect reinstalled back into the van, so we are all ready for some highway miles. I think this wraps up this here living the van life adventure. If you've made it this far and you're new to the channel, make sure and hit the subscribe button. And also don't forget to hit the little bell next to the subscribe button because that's what's gonna notify you anytime videos like this are uploaded. Also, don't forget to make it on over to livingthevanlife.com. Pick up some of your favorite merch, like this cool Living the Van Life hat. I've got t-shirts, I've got hoodies, I've got stickers, all sorts of stuff over there at livingthevanlife.com. Also, don't forget to leave your feedback in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys think about these videos. Hit the like button. Don't forget to share it with any friends or family that you think might enjoy a video like this. With that being said, guys, I'm gonna hit the road in search of the next living the van life adventure. Peace out. Keep on trucking.